right into it. So polycystic ovarian syndrome, we know the incidence is about one in 10 Mm -hmm. women is what I've recently read. Mm -hmm. That's right. Is that similar to what you've studied as well? Yes. It is the number one cause of contributing towards infertility or subfertility in a female. You see on paper is that the cycles are very long from day one of period to day one of next period can be highly variable, but in general, it's usually more than 35 days, but it can it can vary quite a bit there, even within one woman. So we have low frequency of ovulation and oftentimes higher androgens. Mm-hmm. On ultrasound, as we were talking, sometimes you can see something called a string of pearls because mm-hmm. essentially the women, will de- their ovaries will have a lot of eggs that get to a, get to a certain point in development and then just kind of stop. Mm-hmm. And so they'll have something on ultrasound that looks like a ton of little circles. Within the last 10 years or so, AMH has become mm-hmm a much more a readily available lab and um, that corresponds with PCOS the higher it is basically because those tiny follicles once they get to a certain point in development they produce AMH mm-hmm. and so the more tiny follicles you have at that size the more AMH is going to be produced and that correlates really well with something called the um, LH to FSH FSH ratio, which mm-hmm. is another, uh, it's a set of labs that we can draw on cycle day three and evaluate, is their body really struggling with ovulation? Is the body at the get go, at the baseline, at the period, have, having difficulty recruiting one egg, mm-hmm. fully developing that one egg towards ovulation? 